Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or it is made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of prophecy or a gift of tongues or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching in, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to uh, Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah, chap Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Hey, I want y'all to be quiet in there. Y'all go in there and sit down and be quiet. That's right. Yes, Dad. Did you tell them to go downstairs? Well, should they go downstairs and watch the No, they can do whatever one they want. They just got to be quiet, whatever they do. Go into the hard room. Go. Go into the hard room. It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. This is Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Who shall he teach knowledge? Uh huh. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Uh huh. Men that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the bread. He asked a question. He said, Who is he going to teach the knowledge to? And who is he going to make to understand the doctrine? Is it going to be the ones that's weaned from the breast and drawn from the milk? Right? What else? For a precept must be upon a precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. Uh huh. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. So now notice how he said he's gonna speak to the people. He said he's gonna speak to the people with stammering lips and like he speaks another language. Stammering lips and another tongue. Right? So when he's talking about it, he's talking about the knowledge of God, the knowledge of salvation, the knowledge of what the Most High God expects from us. He said, Who is he gonna teach this to? Right? Who's going to understand what he's talking about? Is it going to be the ones just weaned from the milk? He's letting you know he's speaking to you like he's speaking a different language and like he has a stutter problem. That tells us right off of the bat when we open up this book, we're not going to know what it's talking about. We're going to struggle. We're going to look at it. We're going to have a hard time. We're going we gonna to wanna, we gonna wanna stop. We're going to want to do stuff. We're going to want to give up. We're going to want to try something different. And that's why we're in the predicament that we're in. That's why you have so many pastors that really don't know nothing about this book. Because they come from a lineage of people that never actually looked into the book to understand it. They come from a lineage of people that just guess or was taught something, followed tradition, and it all just gets passed down. It got to stop with us. Right? It got to stop with us. Most High God got all the information that we need to know for life right here. And all day we sit here and argue back and forth about it, and nobody takes the time to actually just sit there and study it for what it is. Right? But they call themselves darn teachers of it. Then that put us in a position to follow somebody who's following it wrong. Gotta stop. Right? Keep going. He said, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest, wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Uh-huh. And this is the refreshing. But what? Yet they would not hear. But they would not hear. So the word of the Lord was unto them? But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept. Uh-huh. Precept upon precept. Uh-huh. Line upon line. Uh -huh. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Uh-huh. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. I got that. Right? I got that. He said, they'll be broken and snared and taken. What's a snare? Trap. That's a trap. You got a snare, that's going to put you in a trap. 
All right? That's what it's all about for us. We have to understand that what we're dealing with, what we're up against, it's not supposed to be this, this, this movie where you open up the Bible and it all just clicks at the second time that you read it. It's supposed to be a struggle, right? That's the normal way that it's set up. It's set up for you to struggle against it, fight against it. It's supposed to kill your flesh. Whenever something dies, that thing don't feel good, right? Yeah, you got, I mean, let's say, I mean, let's say you got an open wound. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, knee hurt. I don't know. Fell. Cracked your knees. I don't know. But it broke open. It's bleeding. You know what I'm saying? The best thing to do for that open cut is to do what? I mean, what's the best thing to do? Band-Aid stop the bleeding. Clean it. You got to clean that. Then how you going to clean it? Alcohol. I mean, alcohol going to be the best way to clean it. I mean, you can also clean it with maybe some, like, peroxide. You know what I'm saying? Now, what would be the benefit? You got alcohol, you got peroxide. What would be the benefit of taking the peroxide over the alcohol? I mean, you just got both right there, but you like, you know what? I'm going to go with that peroxide. Why would that person go with the peroxide? Because it hurts less. I mean, it hurts just a little bit less if you go with the peroxide. Let's say you got alcohol, peroxide, and the Band-Aid right there. Right? You might look at that thing and be like, listen, you know what I'm, I'm just going to go straight to that good old Band-Aid. Put a little water on it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I used to do. I used to be like, look. Put a little water on it. I don't even tell my mom. I scrape my knee. You ain't got time for that stuff. I know what she gonna do. Put a little water on that thing. You know what I'm saying? Put the band-aid on it. That thing still, even the water hurt, everything hurt. Right? But you just know, like, out of all my options, I know which one I'm not gonna do. Even though that's gonna clean it the best, that thing gonna be the most uncomfortable. That's how the book is for us. It's gonna be the most uncomfortable to sit down and, and, and sit here and listen to the word or read the word yourself. Right? Truth be told. I mean, even sitting here and listening to it, truth be told. I mean, your boy, I mean, you just sit here. Zakat, I want you, listen to me. I want you to be quiet. Sit your butt down right there. Hush! Right? Well, we can, we can, we can, I mean, we can just, this, this room, just sitting here, sometimes that thing is struggle. Y'all ain't seen some people come up. First of all, some of, some of us, we sit here and you start getting tired all of a sudden. Right? And then sometimes, you see other people come in here and you see them squirming. I get to saying certain things. They squirming in their darn seat. It's a struggle. Especially if you believe something you've been told your whole life, no matter what you do, God got your back. God love you no matter what you do. No matter what you do, you're going to go to heaven. Right? All of these things we look at and we have to look at and we have to say, all this is going to affect us. You start hearing the truth, that thing starts to agitate your spirit. It starts to make you uncomfortable. That's what it's supposed to do. The book said that thing like what? Like a two-edged sword. And like fire. What do you think a two-edged sword feel like? And a hammer that breaks a rocket piece. What do you think fire feel like? What do you think a darn hammer... All these images that he said, my word is like, my word is like a two-edged sword, it's like fire, and it's like a hammer. Which one of them, which one of them images that he gave just feels good for you? Somebody come to you with a darn hammer, you're going to call them darn crazy. They come running you with a darn sword, you're going to be dugging like that person. Somebody call Homeland Security. They come to you some darn fire. He was like, man, this is an arsonist. We don't have time for this. But that's what his word is. Once we understand that and set the right expectation, this is what's in front of us. According to God, not according to Philip, not according to what the pastor tells us. I know the pastor tells tell, you know what? Just say the Lord's Prayer. Right? Say the sinner's prayer. Come to the front of, front of the church. You sit down. Just one, just, I mean, won't you come? Right? And they're just telling you know what? That's all you need to do. God will take care of the rest. Just trust God. That feel good, make it feel easy. But you know what? Something always feel empty when we went down that road. All right? It always felt like we were just missing something or it was just a little something more that we had to do. I always feel like, like I'm saved this week, but next week I don't know that I'm really saved. All right? With this one we're talking about, you know you ain't saved. You know for a fact you ain't saved. You look down, you be like, everything I'm doing is against the book. I ain't crazy. I know I ain't darn saved. And guess what? On the other side, you know, exactly when you say, you look down and be like, you know what? I'm doing exactly what the book said. You still feel temptation. You still feel stuff happen. You still, you still feel something in you be like, man, this ain't enough. We still feel that. Right? Even when you turn, turn from sin, you still feel that. It ain't enough. But you know the difference? We can look at the book and say, I know I ain't sinning. 
I mean, I mean, may, maybe I need to be doing more, right? Maybe I need to be start doing this, that, and other. But I can look at the book and be like, well, everything Most High God told me to do, told me not to do. I ain't doing that. We can work with that. The Most High God can work with that. It's a different type of confidence that comes to a man or a woman, right? But when we sit here and and we we skip back and forth and we play and we we have all these struggles that we come across, we just can't succumb to them. It's gonna come. It's never gonna stop coming. It just feels this big at first. Right? You start learning how to dodge that thing. That thing too big for you to dodge at first. It'll smack you a couple times. Then you get better at dodging it. You know what I'm saying? And the word teach you all this. Then eventually, that thing miss you all the way. When you get good enough, that thing feel this small. It's always there. I ain't going to say it's always going to be there. But it feel like it's always there. God willing, most, well, God willing, that thing go completely away. You ain't even got a temptation. You just walk. Right? You just walk in the word. But until then... You just gotta make that thing where it's that small. It's coming at you all the time. That thing, man, get out of my way. Right? No, I ain't doing that. That's crazy. All right? That's silly. I ain't got no time for that stuff. That thing's against everything I believe in. Move. That's what we're here for. Only way you can get there is knowledge of the book. Grab uh, Judges. So remember last week, we talked about Joshua. Uh, and Joshua uh, took the people into the land. We started taking over all types of stuff. We divided up the land. So now we're going to go to the book of Judges. All right, the book of Judges is going to kind of take us from where Joshua left off and picked up. Right? And just a, fore, just a foreshadowing of what's happening is because Joshua was the man and was the man of God and he showed them miracles, the people followed Joshua. So we're going to see how the people react when there is no leader, no, lead, no, no, no man that's heading over them that follows the Most High God. Right? And this will kind of give us insight to where we are today. Uh, you have to understand, we've been in a place where there have been no men, right? We've had judges, right? That, which is what we're about to read of. We had people that came up and avenged us, and people that came up and tried to speak on our behalf, and tried to get us out of oppression, right? Some somewhat successful, some not at all. We've had that, but what we haven't had is a man of God standing up for us. So this will kind of be indicative for how the people feel today, and it's kind of, kind of hard today. This is Judges chapter 1. We're going to probably read the whole chapter. The Judges chapter 1, verse 1. What the book say? Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? Uh-huh. And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, Who gonna go up? Judah shall go up. Judah gotta go first. You know what I'm saying? Where the Messiah come from. Who else gonna go first? Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. His hand. Mm -hmm. And Judah said unto Simeon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. Mm -hmm. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. Uh -huh. And they slew of them in Bezek ten thousand men. And they found Adonai Bezek in, the, in Bezek. And they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Uh -huh. But Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him and caught him. And cut off his thumbs and his great toes. All right, so we still taking stuff over. Keep going. And Adonai Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, uh -huh. as I have done. So God has required it meat. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Uh -huh. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and had taken it and smitten it with the edge of the sword and set the city uh, on fire. All right? You got to remember, this is where our people came from. Right? Most high God say he a man of war. Right? We look at stuff and be like, oh, well, you know, God came for Pete. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand, this is, just, this is just what he got set up as a punishment for us. Right? We is, what we're reading about right now is a time that we were God's judgment. Right? We were used as a tool and an instrument of God's judgment. So you got people that were sinning against God. And the Most High God used us to judge them. Therefore, we went to war. Most High God said, kill them all. Right now, the Most High God is using other people as an instrument to judge us. So that's why you see cops killing us down. That's why you see whole nations taking over our ancestors and taking them into slavery. Right? It's the same thing. It's just the shoe is on the other foot right now. So therefore, the Most High God don't have us set up to go have wars and have our own country. 
make no mistake, nothing has changed about God. The only thing that changed is the direction of his anger. So, um, he actually warned the children of Israel of that with Moses. Let them know if you don't do what I say, I'll have some other people do you. How you doing them? And that's exactly what he did. We disobeyed him. Let's read it. Watch this. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem and had taken it and spitted it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. Mm -hmm. And afterward the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain mm -hmm. and in the south and in the valley. Mm -hmm. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Mm -hmm. Now the name of Hebron before was Kiriath Arba. Mm -hmm. And they slew Shishai and Ammon and Talmai. Mm -hmm. And from there he went against the inhabitants of Deber. And the name of Deber before was Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, He that smites Kiriath Sefer and takes it, to him will I give Ashka, my daughter, to wife. All right. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Exa, his daughter, to wife. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted from off her donkey, and Caleb said unto her, What do you want? Mm hmm. And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Mm -hmm. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. Mm -hmm. And the children of Kiriath and the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the south of Erech. And they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited deep. Mm -hmm. and utterly destroyed it and it came in the name of the city was called Hormah also Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof and Ashkelon with the coast thereof and Ekron with the coast thereof alright so we're taking all these different lands but watch this and the Lord was with Judah Uh huh. and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountains look but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because uh -oh. they had chariots of iron so we're taking over all these people whatever Uh, she don't put them in the comments if you tag them in the comments. Like, will they see the video? Mm hmm I think so, at least. Now, you see here, we, uh, we, we taking over all this land in Judah, right? But then it's just a certain group we couldn't take out because they had chariots. All right? Let's keep going. Watch this. It's all going to become important soon. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said, and he expelled there the three sons of Anak. Uh huh. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. So look at this. Children of Benjamin, they had their territory, but they didn't drive out the Jebusites. Okay, let's keep going. But the Jebusites dwell in the, with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem until this day. Mm hmm. In the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. Mm hmm. And the house of Joseph sent to descry. And the house of Joseph sent to descry Bethel. Bethel. Now the, name, now the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Show us, we pray thee, the entrance of the city, and we will show you mercy. Uh -huh. And when he showed them the entrance of the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. they, but they let go of the man and all his family. Mm -hmm. And the man went into the land of the Hittites and built the city and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. Mm -hmm. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shean. So here you go, Manasseh. Manasseh didn't drive out all the inhabitants of his place. So remember, our goal was to go in here, take over all the land in the people's mind. Right? And our minds, when we came in, we like, oh, God about to give us this whole land right away. We forgot. He told us something. He said, I'm going to drive it out little by little. So when we went up against adversity and we started going up against some of these people, some of these people are a little stronger than we were. And the Most High God didn't help us take them out. So let's see what, what type of compromises we start making. Neither, neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shean in her towns, nor Tanak in her towns, for the inhabitants of Dor in her towns, nor the inhabitants of Ibliam uh -huh. in her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo in her towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in that land. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute. They did what? Put the Canaanites to tribute. That's a no-no. And did not utterly drive them out. What does it mean to put them to tribute? Making me a servant. We made them servants. The Most High God told us, don't make peace with this people. 
you have to kill them all. But you know what we did? We left them there because they were stronger than us at first. And then when we got stronger than them, just imagine, you know what I'm saying? Like, you kind of at war with this group, but you ain't strong enough to take them out. And they don't quite take you out. So you got to live amongst them for a little while. Then you kind of, you know, like your family's kind of, you know, y'all kind of get used to like, you know, y'all ain't, ain't really cool. But y'all learn to live near each other. Then you get strong enough to be like, I can get rid of you right now. But since, you know what I'm saying, like, your kids sometimes play with my kid. I don't like y'all, but sometimes our kids play together. You can imagine, be like, well, I ain't going to kill all y'all. Instead, y'all got to be our servants. That's a compromise. That's not what the most I got asked for. All right? Keep going. Watch this. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, mm -hmm. but the Canaanites, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Right? Watch this. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7. Give me verse uh, 21. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 21. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Mm -hmm. Thou mayest not consume them all at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. So the Most High God had a method to it. He said, you're going to take out these people little by little. Otherwise, you're going to have the beasts of the field. They increase on you and they mess around and kill y'all. But he says, so I'm going to let y'all take them out, but little by little. Only a little bit at a time. This is the type of stuff that make it important for us to understand and know what the word is expecting of us. You read that, imagine reading that, you know, maybe 50 years before, right? And it's telling you, I'm going to drive out the people little by little. But you didn't, you never revisited that, that verse in the book. So you go out, it's wartime. And the only thing you're hearing, God is on your side. God will let you conquer everything. He won't leave you or forsake you. And you face some adversity where these people starting to kick your butt. I mean, you got most of them out, but it's just this one group. These last two groups, you can't get them out. If you stick to the word and you remember it and you believe it, then be like, oh, okay, that's all right. We just doing too much at one time. We'll get the rest later. But not us. We started to make side deals with people. Oh, we can't whoop them. Let's make side deals with them. Most of our guys said don't make no side deals. All right? Grab, uh, grab uh, chapter 2. This Judges chapter 2. Give me... um. Give me verse like 15. It judges chapter 2, verse 15. Whether soever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. Uh -huh. As the Lord had said, as the Lord had sworn unto them, uh -huh. they were greatly distressed. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, the, Lord's raised, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Uh -huh. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. So you see what happened? This is after Joshua died and all the leaders that were with Joshua that saw the miracles of the Most High God, this is after they all died. So now after they die, you see the people just start doing whatever they want to do. Because they don't have that leadership. They don't have anybody teaching them the truth. And nobody was there to experience it, so it was easy for them to just say, you know what, I'm going to do what I want. I believe that we should serve God this way. I believe we should serve God this way. Everybody come with their opinions. They do what's right in their own eyes. All right, keep going. But they went a-whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, uh -huh. obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. What did judge mean? Uh, someone to execute judgment and lead the people going in avenger. It's an avenger, right? It's somebody who, you know what I'm saying, they get the good back. You know what I'm saying? What's up? When we be in the press by people... The Most High God raised somebody up to get the other people butt, right? That's what's important. These people wasn't necessarily righteous men, all right? It wasn't like these people was like they were put in place because they did everything right. I believe we had Avengers, right? Like you look at somebody like Dr. Martin Luther King. No, he wasn't doing, he wasn't preaching the right thing, you know what I'm saying? He didn't follow the book correctly. But, you know what I'm saying, based off of him, we did have some suffering lifted off. 
Same thing with Malcolm X. Same thing with, uh, you know what I'm saying, some of these other brothers. You know what I'm saying? It's not that they served God in any way that was correct. But they did avenge us in some ways. Right? Not necessarily by violence like some are like like some are uh our judges that we read about in the book. But we have some judges in the book that didn't come down that, that didn't necessarily bring violence either. They may have prophesied something, right? Like Deborah. She didn't have no violence around her. She just said, hey, this is what's about to happen. Right? But she was still an avenger. Right? It's just important for us to understand and be able to recognize the similarities in judges to what we see today. Keep going. And when the Lord raised up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. Uh -huh. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. That's right. And it came to pass. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them. Uh huh. And to bow down unto them. Uh huh. They ceased not from their own doings. They did what now? They ceased not from their own doings. They didn't stop. Nor from their stubborn way. They didn't stop. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he said, Because that this people has transgressed my covenant which I commanded their fathers. I ain't sending nobody out. And have not hearkened unto my voice. I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. To all this land I gave him. Right? Most High God made a promise to us. He said, we're going to go into this land. It's going to be our land, right? We didn't uphold our part of the deal, so guess what? I ain't giving y'all nothing now. Y'all got to share it with them. Just that quick. If we don't uphold our part of the deal, you think the Most High God still gonna uphold His? No, He give you both sides of it at the beginning. If you do it this way, this is what you get. You do it that way, this is what you get. Ain't no other way to play it, right? I'm gonna let you know how I go from the get go. You do it this way or that way. If that thing come back the other way, all right. I told you what I was gonna do. He said I ain't sending nobody out. What else? Let me see what else we got. That through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. When you say prove, what does that mean? Test. Kept in there is a test. When we talked about in the beginning, that the Most High God speak to us like he got a stammering lip or another tongue, he make the book difficult for us like that as what? A test. As a test. Who gonna push through it? Who gonna deal with the fact that I'm saying you're going to get this land, and I'll let you get most of it, but it's a couple tough fellows. You can't really whoop them. Okay, let's see what you're going to do with it. Are you going to make side deals? You couldn't get it the way you originally expected, so now what, you're going to start cutting deals? You're going to start doing stuff the way I told you not to do it? When stuff get tough? I mean, it just get real. I mean, stuff get real hard. Let me see if I can find some side. I know I ain't got no bit. Let me just see if I can find some side stuff to make it easier for me. We not that people. Be clear, that's our people. Right? We come from that people. We reading about our people. That's our people. We can't be that people though. We know what happened to our people that do that. You see, Joshua, when we is in the land, man, it don't matter. We lose a battle, what Joshua do? Fall down, cry to the most high God. Most high God, get your butt up. It's sin in the camp. That's why you lost. Alright? Other than that, he give it to Joshua. We don't get it. Joshua sit down, talk to the most high God. Right? That got to be us. We got two people to draw from. A lot of times we talk about we Hebrews and all this stuff. You got to understand, a lot of Hebrews messed up. Majority of it was a mess. Majority of it is the reason why the rest of the world is, you know what I'm saying, going down this rabbit hole that is going down. They following us. So we got to get ourselves to a point where we say, okay, I don't just want to be an Israelite. I don't just want to be a Hebrew. I don't want to just get in tune with my culture. I want to get in tune with the Most High God. I just want to do it right. God can respect that. He looked down, he see a heart like that, he can, he can do something with that. What he can't do something with is the one that ain't going to admit they wrong. Right? They ain't going to confess they wrong. They ain't going to cease from all they doing. They just going to keep doing the right thing. You know what they're going to do when they keep doing the wrong thing? They just going to keep telling themselves it's okay. I mean, you're just going to sit here and tell yourself, yeah, I'm sinning. I know it's wrong, but God still loved me. That's dangerous. Because then you believe it. Right? Why do you think, why do you think, 
Why do you think you got to do something different that even the apostles didn't do? I mean, you look at the, if I grab, uh, grab Mark, grab Mark 14. Black boy. Look at that, black boy. This is Mark chapter 14. Give me verse 16. Mark chapter 14, verse 16. I mean, no matter how you look at it, everybody got to come in the same way. Right by the door. You know what I'm saying? You come up any other way, you're a darn thief. Darn robber. Right? Everybody got to come up right by the door. And his disciples went forth. And this is Mark them. chapter 14, verse what, 16? Yeah. This is Mark chapter 14, verse 16. What does the book say? And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. Uh huh. And in the evening he comes with the twelve. Now notice how God worked now. God made a promise to him. He said, I'm going to give y'all this land. It's going to be y'all land. We get to the land. We got to deal with some adversity. We make side deals. All that get taken away. Same thing here. Most of God said, let me go ahead and eat the Passover with y'all. Right? Let me eat the Passover with y'all. I mean, y'all my disciples. Y'all the 12 disciples, right? Let's hear about it. And as they sat and did eat, Yahushua said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eats with me shall betray me. He tell them flat out, we eating together. Y'all my boys. Y'all the ones, I mean, y'all the ones approve. Y'all get to roll with me in the inner circle. As soon as we sit down, oh, one of y'all gonna betray me. Make no mistake. One of y'all snake, right? Right after that, what happens? And they began to be sorrowful and say unto him, one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I? Uh-huh. And he answered and said unto them, it is one of the twelve that dips with me in the dish. This is Matthew chapter 16, watch this. He said, it's one of the twelve that dips with me in the dish. We know how that story ends, right? It's Judas, right? And Judas came, you know what I'm saying? He, he went out. He made it. He cut a deal, cut a side deal, right? Came back and he said, y'all show up. Is that easy? You think Judas still getting to the kingdom? That's crazy. Sure, he was one of the 12. Sure, he was in the inner circle. He walked with y'all show up. When that day come and y'all show up calling everybody and Judas walk up like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? I used to roll with you. What do you think y'all show up going to say to the man? I never knew you. The man walked around with him, side by side, exchanged words with him by name. He gonna look at Judas right in the face. I never knew you. I never knew you. It'll make sense in a minute. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, give me verse uh, 15. Zahar. Oh, give me some uh, water if you don't mind, please, son. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? See that water right there? Give me that water up there. He said, whom say ye who I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Messiah, the son of the living God. Right? Then Peter, he replied back to him. He said, I appreciate you, son. He replied back to him. He said, you the Messiah, the son of God, son of the living God. Watch this. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, mm -hmm. for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. Who revealed it unto him? But my father, which is in heaven. He said, my father revealed. Ain't that big? Had a son of God sit there and look you in the face and be like, oh, the father revealed. I didn't even know the father. I just was saying something. But you telling me I got that from the father? To have him reveal that? Oh, no, the father revealed that unto you. That was an honor. I mean, you'll look at that and be like, you know what? Peter was saved right there. He is born again right there. That's how you kind of look at it, right? All right, let's go back to Mark 14. Where we leave off. 20. It's Mark 14, verse 20. Watch this. I mean, you look at it. If the father revealed to him who the son was. I mean, just reading it, you'll look at it and be like, Peter was saved in that moment. He was born again. That's how you know Peter was chosen from the, I mean, he was a 12 disciple. 
It was 12 disciples. Did it always, was it always 12 disciples? Always? At first, and then what happened? Went to 11 real quick. Don't let these people set y'all up. Just because, just because you have an experience with the most high God, you think the deal was off? You think you can just do whatever you want to do from there? I mean, no, nah, well, I was saved in 99. Yeah, your butt could be whatever you want to be in 99. You don't keep that thing to the end, your butt gonna be gone. You're gonna be darn gone. These people get hung up. I'm talking to a guy today. He told me, yeah, but if you're born again, you can still sin. What book you darn reading? What's wrong with you? What I'm be born again for and I'm still doing the same thing I was doing before I was born again? What sense does that make? I don't know how these people even come up with this. It's not in the book. You can't point to it. You born again, you stop sinning. What if I'm born again and then I sin again? What that mean? You're never born again. Your butt was lying when you said you were born again. I mean, what about Peter? When did it say Peter? Show me something in the Bible that say Peter was born again. In this moment, thou Peters was born again. You will never read it. We sitting here worried about, mm, I think he was born again when God said. Go ahead, watch this. Let's see if he was born again right here. This verse 20? This Mark verse 20? Verse, Mark chapter 14 verse 20? Yeah. Okay. And he answered and said unto, him, unto them, it is one of the twelve that dips with me in the dish. Mm -hmm. And the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Uh huh. Good word for that man if he had never been born. Uh huh. And as they did eat, y'all sure took bread and blessed it and break it. And uh -huh. gave to them and said, Take, eat this, is my body. Uh huh. And he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out in the Mount of Olives. And Yahshua said to them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. He said, I will smite the shepherd, and then the sheep gonna mess around and be scattered. Uh -huh. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. And Peter said unto him, although all shall be Now listen what he said. He said, listen, the prophecy tell you they going to smite the shepherd. They going to mess around and hit the shepherd. And all the sheep is going to run away. And then watch what Peter said. Remember, this is the same Peter that was saved. All right? Although all shall be offended, yet will I not. Right? Peter said, even if everybody else run from me, Lord, I ain't going to do no running now. Peter said, not me. Everybody else might run from you, Lord. Ain't going to be me. I ain't going nowhere. Let's hear about it. And Yahshua said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. He said, not only is your butt going to run from me, you running from me tonight. Right? It's going to be this very night that uh, you going to run from me. And guess what happened? Yahshua got gaffled up by these people. They start looking like, oh, you rolling with y'all sure? Because your butt can get it too. Guess what Peter said? No, not me. Ran right from the home. Right? Ran right from him. Okay, so now what does that mean? Peter was born again and then he backslid? That's why it's important for us. We can't get hung up on what we think and making assumptions. The book never told you when they were born again. The book never told you this is the moment that they were born again. The only thing the book say is, these are the apostles. These are the disciples. Started off with 11. I mean 12. Oop, we lost one. That should mean something to us. If the Most High God can handpick you and steal your butt can end up in hell. What makes you think that us, who just getting in just based off of reading the book, most of our guy ain't had no, no live interaction with us as far as we can see. What makes you think we can, I mean, we just gonna mosey on in there. All these men had to repent, and they got to endure to the end. Same thing go for the apostles and go for anybody else. What else we got? Keep going. But he spake the more vehement, vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Look, it's Peter. He said, there's no way I'm going to deny you, Lord. He's in there arguing with him. 
Watch it. Likewise, also said they all. Mm hmm. And they came into a place which was named. You good. Grab, uh, grab Proverbs for me. It's Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. It's Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. All right, it's important that we understand. We got to be able to look at it and say, it's one thing It's one thing to know for ourselves, but it's another thing to be able to see it in the book, right? Because that reconfirms stuff for you. It's like, okay, I know this the right thing. I know this how it's supposed to play out. But when you can see the examples, you could probably identify. What, what's been stolen from us is, a lot of this stuff we've been taught traditionally. So when we look at the book, we see all these weird traditions that we've been taught. Right? When we see Peter being chosen by God and then telling him that I would never leave you and even if everybody else run, it ain't going to be me. When we see that, we be like, look how forgiving God is. I mean, even though Peter ain't perfect, God still love him. Because that's how we've been taught the word. Let me show you what we didn't see, though. This is a uh, this is a uh, proverb chapter twenty four, verse uh, sixteen. For a just man falls seven times and rise up again. So hold on, a just man falls how many times? Seven times. And so a just man gonna mess around and fall seven different times, but then at the end of it, what happens? He'll rise up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. When the wicked fall, his butt is in mischief. That's the difference. It's not saying that you're going to be without sin for, the, for all your life. That's not what the books say. That's not what we teach. What do we teach? If you a just man, your butt going to get up. Uh, so like can people abuse that and be like, oh, that's why I repent every day? Yeah, people can do whatever they want to do. If you repent every day, where's that, what's that going to land you on? Grab, grab it real quick. It's, uh, it's uh, James chapter... Uh, it's something in the book. It don't matter what whatever angle they take. Book, God gonna cover himself. I appreciate the man too. He cover himself. Any little angle we try to think of, he got something for it. Like, yeah, you're not smarter than me. That's how you be looking. Yeah, you're not smarter than me. This is uh, what I want. James... Uh, what I want? Three, maybe? Wait. Double-minded? That... James, maybe three. Who got their phone? You got your phone? Look it up for me. Uh, uh, just type in Google, James Double Minded. Let's see who can get a U or T first. Other than white competition, go. No power for tools. Two. It's one? Double on one? All right, this is James chapter one, verse eight. I'd never guess one. It seemed like that thing was in the thick of it. You sure that's what I want? Yeah, hold on. This is James chapter one. Give me verse. We ain't gotta get the whole thing. We just need what we got. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What, what's next? Watch what we say next. I want what's right after that. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that. That come right after that? He is exalted. I don't know if that's what I want then. Yeah, you want all of them go up high. So it this is, is uh, James chapter 1, verse 5. five yeah. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that given to all men liberally and upbraided not, uh -huh. and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Okay. But he that waver is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Uh huh. For let not that man think. Let that not that man what? Think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A man that I mean, you wavering, you going, you getting tossed to and fro. Let that man think that he should. He gonna get what? Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. I don't know what you think you getting from God if you going. I mean, you repent every single day. What repent mean? First of all, change. 
you repent, I mean, you turning around, you changing your mind. So, I mean, let's say you change your mind every day. What does that make you? Double mind. Double mind. So falling seven times, what does that mean? All that means is I fell, I sinned, I got up, I sinned again. Double minded, got up, double minded, got up. But at the end of it, I am up. Right? So our goal is not, at the end of the day, it don't matter how many times I fell. God ain't thinking about how many times I fell. At the end of the day, when I die, when it comes to me living the rest of my life, did I live righteously? Did I choose a point in my life and I say I turn from all sins and I live the rest of my life? Right? So if we continue to play a game and be like, well, you know what I'm saying? I'm righteous, not righteous. Righteous, unrighteous. Righteous, unrighteous. If we die in that state of being double-minded, we ain't getting nothing from God. Right? So that's, that's what a wicked person does. A wicked person falls into mischief because they fail and they couldn't get up. They convince themselves, double-minded. As far as God looking at, we look at it we going back and forth. God looking at, you've been doing the same thing this whole time. Oh, you thought you were righteous for a few months. Oh, no, you the sinner this whole time to me. Because all he look at is that last thing you did. That's it. If the last thing you're doing is righteous, but you forget all that unrighteousness. You ain't got time for that. You're a righteous person is his eye. But if the last thing you did was righteous, I mean unrighteousness, then you forget all your righteousness. Anything you can live your entire life is a, as a pristine, you know what I'm saying, righteous, keep the law perfectly, follow everything y'all wish you would say. And then, you know, that last year of your life, you're just like, you know what? I deserve it. Let me just wild out. You know what I mean? Let me just, you know what I'm saying, lose it. Most like God looking at all that stuff means nothing. Yeah, right? You don't know when you're going to die, so that's why the whole book tells you just don't sin, period. Just I mean, you out here just going like this. That's around roll them snake eye. All right? What else we got? Grab Hebrews for me here. It's Hebrews chapter 6. Give me verse 1. People just got to know about sin. It's important too. I was talking to y'all and arguing. Read, most of the reason why, you know what I'm saying, I talk, arguing with this man, he just trying, I mean, he just, I mean, he just poking at me. I just, I try to lead the conversation so many times. He just poking at me. He just trying to let me know. No, you could be born again and still sin. And that thing is just like crazy to me. I'm looking like, I mean, I get it because that's what we talk. What I don't get is you an adult man and you claim to teach the book. So you familiar with this book, I hope at least a little bit. When I open it up to you, I know you see what I'm talking about. Right? I know you see what the book's saying. You know what's crazy? When people can tell you something about the book, all you do is quote the book and they get talking about how you alive. I ain't said nothing yet. I'm just quoting the book. So who lying? They don't believe. Right? They don't believe. They don't say, no, you misinterpreted. That's what I mean. I ain't saying the book is lying. Right, you just misinterpreted. How you gonna misinterpret cannot sin? Man ain't gonna tell me how it's a sin. Man ain't gonna say, well, no, sin is in the Bible. That means a lifestyle of sin. Oh, <laughs> lifestyle. But if you don't knock it off, I told me, if you don't knock it off with this voodoo, I don't play that stuff. You just look at the word, you know what darn, darn sin it means. Try to give it a new definition to fit your worldview just because you don't believe the word. Because I don't believe the word as it's written, I gotta change definition to make it where I is something I can believe. Define lifestyle sin. I gotta make two sins to be for it to be a lifestyle. I mean, if I just sin once, that's not a lifestyle. But if I sin twice, is that a life? How many times you gotta sin for it to be a lifestyle? That's what happens. This is the problem with people. When you start doing all this stuff, okay, so there is a certain amount of sins you can make to say that you're not saved then. So the Christian, what they wanna do is they wanna live in this like, they wanna live in this gray area. The problem is when it comes down to them not feeling saved, who going to tell them if they're in the gray area or not? When it comes down to, you know what, I think I went too far, who going to tell me I'm in the gray area? Nobody defined it. So now sometimes I feel saved, sometimes I don't. Or I convince myself, I mean, no matter what I do, God still loves me. All that stuff is a lie. And you know it. Most of our God ain't working with no gray area. Everything he said defined. And it stay just how it is. And ain't nobody moving it. You try to move it, you a thief. Got time to be busting with these darn people. Then I told T.O., let you know what? This might be all right. 
We got baptized tomorrow. It's all right for us to learn about some sin. Sorry, right. it's all right for us to learn about being born again. Right? That's what we need. We got to understand what this means. Mess around. Sister believe she, I mean, she get baptized. She believe, okay, this is it. She mess around. Slip up after that. She didn't think, oh, I'm doomed. This is why she's going to think that. Watch this. This is why she's going to think it. This is Hebrews chapter 6. Ain't nobody teaching this book. That's a problem. Ain't nobody, nobody giving them book. I ain't scared to say nothing in this book. If it's in the book, it's right. Books say you fall seven times, you get up, it's right. I ain't responsible for somebody to take advantage of that. You try to take advantage, you ain't taking advantage of nothing but your darn self. Keep on playing with the man. You're gonna shut your butt darn down. I think it's right. And I ain't scared to tell nobody if you don't stop sending, you going to darn hell. I'm supposed to be scared somebody offended by that. But sit here and learn the darn word. Keep on playing, it's too late in the day. Next year they celebrate 400 years of us being here. I don't know what's going to darn happen after that. How are we supposed to know what's going to darn happen after that? It could be the end of the world tomorrow. It could be another 400 years. Who knows? You got to be darn ready. I know that much. This is, uh, what is it? It's uh, Hebrew chapter 6. Give me verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of doctrines of the Messiah, let us go on unto perfection. He said, let us go on to perfection. Not laying down what? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Repentance from dead. L listen to what the foundation. I mean, you just starting, baby. You just right at the bottom with it. He said, not laying again the, fo the foundation of repentance from dead works. What's repentance? To turn away from sin. Turn away from all sin. Right? You don't believe me on that? You better grab the end of uh, Ezekiel 18 or 33. 18. You better grab the end of Ezekiel 18. It tell you, you turn away from all sin. You repent from all sin. All right? Keep going. What else we got? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and what? And faith towards who? And faith towards God. Okay, that's the foundation. Right? First thing you got to do. Foundation means the bottom of it, the start. First thing, the what you start with, you got to turn from sin and put your faith towards God. You ain't even doing nothing until you've done that. You understand? You, we not know it. A lot of people be like, oh, I'm just a baby in Christ. That's why I still get drunk and smoke weed. Oh, okay. Your butt ain't even born yet. You haven't done nothing until you turn from sin. You got to look at it like, man, I ain't even got on the game. You know, you get you play you play like Monopoly. You know, so everybody got to pick their piece. You ain't even picked your piece yet. You trying to talk about pass and go. You ain't passed no dark. You ain't even picked the piece. Get on the board. What else you got to get on the board? Spade. You know what I'm saying? You know how you playing some spin, you got, got you a nice hand. You ain't got on the board yet? Domino. You ain't get on the darn board yet? I mean, you out there playing. I mean, everything good. But you ain't getting no points on the board yet? Oh, come on. Well, your buddy about to be out of here. Let's keep going. Of the doctrine of baptism. Okay. So, first you got to turn from sin. Then you got to learn about baptism. This is basic. Right? This is what the book's saying. These are basic things. What else? And of laying on of hands. Oh, now we gotta learn how to pray. Right? Pray for one another. Basic. Right? What up? And of the resurrection of the dead. And of the resurrection of the dead. What up? And of eternal judgment. And of eternal judgment. What? What up? And this we will do if God permit. Mm, keep going. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. It is imp what does enlighten mean? That you know. It's impossible for those who know and have tasted of the heavenly gift and they tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God uh -huh. and the powers of the world to come uh -huh. if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. The writer of Hebrews is letting you know very clearly it is impossible after you've been enlightened, which means what? To know. To know. So after you know, to then fall away and be renewed again. So you know how we talk about our seven times, right? Right? I fall seven times. If I fall once and then I say, but I know God, or oh, if you know God, it's impossible. For you be renewed again. 
So sister, we baptize her tomorrow. She mess around and be like, I got baptized, right? And then let's just say, God forbid, but let's just say something matters, she slipped. She committed another sin. She didn't mess around and be like, book said, I mean, because she believed a book. She don't look at that book, she'll be like, it just said, it's impossible that I know, right? And then I get renewed again. That's it for me. Right? If she believed that, she'd be better off than one of these Christians. Truth be told, these Christians believe I can just keep falling. It's a glory for a Christian to fall. You understand that? Like, they be looking at it like, that's all right, because God is, listen, if it wasn't for me going through that, God had to bring me through that. Then for them, that's God's testimony is that they were sinning. You understand that? The, the Christian in their mind, you got to fall. Like, that. Not this is going to have this proof. I mean, I wouldn't need Jesus. If I could just stop sinning on my own, I wouldn't need Jesus. Out of their darn mind. In their mind, they warped their mind so much that sinning is the glory of God. You know why? Because I can sin and God still love me. That's how good he is. It's like the book never said. You people are out of your darn mind. The book never said that you can't stop sinning without the Messiah. Never said. You know what I'm saying? Like, there were people in our law that lived blameless according to the law. Well, how'd they do that? Right. There was no Messiah at that time. I don't, I don't know. He didn't die yet. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like people don't know no word. They just weaken everything. They weaken everything. He said that David only sinned in the matter of your eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like, can, can a person live his whole life and, and literally say, I only sinned once? And he had to have sinned. And we like, talking about under the law. Yeah, this ain't even, this is before the Messiah even came. And the book said David only sent one. That thing got to be tight. You know what I'm saying? You talking about under the law. That thing a little tight there. Grab 1 John for me. 1 John chapter 1. We don't learn some book. You know what I'm That's important. We don't learn some book. You mess around the book thing very clearly. If you are enlightened, which means what? You know. Yeah, yeah, what enlightened me? If you enlighten, that means you know. You know. You know what I'm saying? You know what you books say. If you know to do right and don't, what is that? To him it's a sin. If you know to do right and you do and you don't do it, to him it's a sin. So now the books say, if you know and you fall after that, he said, there ain't no way you're gonna crucify the man of rest. He said the man only gonna be crucified once now. Once he crucified and you know. Oh, you done. That's the book. That's the book. So we sit here and we look at the book. We say, well, we believe. We got to go with the book, right? Okay. That's good. That'll put a lot of fear on the man and be like, look, let me not mess this up. Right? And a lot of people might preach it that way. They might preach it to you be like, I just want, I just really, really want my brothers and sisters not to sin. So let me put it out to them like this and leave it like that. Because maybe that'll just put a little bit under them. But you know what? You know what messes us up when we do that? There's some people that do that. You know what messes us up when we do that? If they fall. We got to give them the whole picture. Even if it means some people are going to take advantage. Some people going to take advantage of that. Right? Some people going to say, fall seven times. You know what I mean? Well, I think I got a couple more in me. Right? Some people going to do it. Do I care? And do, I, do I care that you decide to play God as if you're going to win in the end? That ain't none of my darn business. You do whatever you think. We know what I care about. I gave the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and you made a decision off of it. Who was the one who said there is no more sacrifice for sin? We say if we sin, we we'll be blessed. Oh, we can grab that too in a minute. Which one was that? Hebrews 10 okay. or 8. Yeah, same idea, but it's a, yeah, I think it's Hebrews 10 actually. Like no more sacrifice for sin. Like no one's going to come and die for you again. Yeah. Yeah, they say almost the same thing. Yeah. We can grab that one too, though. Uh, grab, uh, Grab 1 John chapter 1, verse 6. Watch this. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So for the Christian that be like, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, I sin every day. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, yeah, I sin every day. I still need Jesus. Right? That means they walking in darkness. But guess what? They know God, though. So they say. You let them tell it. They know God, and, and God is with them every day. God is by their side. Ain't that what they're telling? God is by their side. All right, but you know what? One thing I can say for sure. Through all I've been through, God never what? Left my side. So what is that? If God never left your side, that sounds like fellowship, right? Okay, let's hear about it. 
See you, read it one more time. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But let's just say maybe they really did have an experience where God was really with them. I mean, let's just I mean, let's just give them every benefit of every doubt that we can think of. They really had an experience where they envisioned God. Let's say it wasn't a vision. The living Jesus Christ in the flesh came down and walked with them and had a conversation with them. And it's the real thing. Not like, you know what I'm saying? Like Yahushua the Messiah walked with them, had a conversation. Let's just say that's what happened, right? And we believe that. Let's say we saw it. We witnessed it with our, a miracle with our own eyes. Yahushua the Messiah walked with these Christians. And Yahushua told these Christians, you, my son, you, my daughter, right? And just looked at him and just told him, you. Ignored us, though. Yahushua just walked right past us like we didn't mean nothing. Looked them dead in their face. It was like you to the Christians. Let's just say all that happened. And they turned around and sinned. Does that make the word no? Your butt still going to darn hell. You know what they gonna say? Oh no, I fellowship with him. Say it again, read it again. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Keep going. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahushua the Messiah, his son, cleanses what? Cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light, all our sin is taken away. If we do the right thing, all the, when, when we dip in this water tomorrow, that don't take away your sin. You know what I'm saying? Like when we dip in the water, that's that, that's that's what we do based off of the command. That's a part of following the command. He said dip inside that water. That's, that's book, period. And for us, when we dip inside that water, that symbolizes what the spirit is doing for us. Right? But that's a commandment. It ain't, I don't, I don't even like starting off with it's a symbol. A lot of people say it's a symbol like now, like it's optional. No, no, no. It's a symbol. That's not optional though. That thing has to be done. Every man, woman that has the opportunity to do so is going to make it into the kingdom. It's going to be baptized. Right? I don't care how that thing happened. I don't care, you know, maybe the Catholics baptized you and you turned around. You left Catholicism. Then you learned the truth. That's fine. You got, as long as you got baptized, you follow that word. Right? If you feel like, huh, you know, uh, I think I need to get baptized again by Hebrew, fine too. Let's do it again. Let's do it 17 times if we need to. Just make sure you covered yourself and you follow that word. That thing ain't optional now. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody thinking, you know what I'm saying? That thing, that's just a symbol. I mean, whether I do it or not, no, your butt's gonna go to hell. <laughs> you better stop playing. Yo, buddy, most I got it very clear. Be baptized. What I'm seeing here, if a man tell me be baptized, what I'm gonna look at him and be like, nah, I mean, I don't necessarily have to. That ain't that important. Who gonna tell, how you gonna tell God what the important part is? That's what be killing me about these people. They just pick out the part of the Bible. This part, the really important, I mean, this is the moral law. Show me anywhere in the Bible, it talk to you about the moral law. The whole thing, moral. If you're wrong, if you don't do it, it's not gonna be moral. Give me a, what we got? Uh, John 1, 6. Give me Luke. Right? He said, if you, if you say that you got fellowship with him and you walk in darkness, right? You walk in darkness and you say that you got fellowship with the man. We should read. We should read. The man said, you're a liar. Well, right? We should, read, we should read verse 8 just in case somebody don't agree and they were like, see, he didn't read 8. Oh, go ahead and read 8. All right. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Okay. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's right. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So if we say we never sinned, we have not sinned, past tense, then we make God a liar. So if I walk up to y'all and be like, man, I ain't sinned. I've never sinned ever before in my life. Right? There's no past sins for me. Right? I've never sinned. But sinned with a D is past tense. Is that what it say? E D. Okay. So if I say I've never sinned, Right? Or let's say I have not sinned. That's telling you I've never sinned. Right? There's no past sins for me. He's saying, you say that, you're a liar. We know that everybody sins. Everybody got to sin. Fall short. Everybody got to sin. Got to. Wouldn't be, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be no reason to have y'all sure if somebody can walk on this earth and just do it without me. Everybody got to sin. Right? But, but your butt gonna fall seven times. Your butt gotta get up, and you better end in the up position. Otherwise, your butt going to hell. After you sin, it's your responsibility not to do it. 
Grab for me, uh, what I called it now? Oh, uh, Luke chapter 13. Because it's important that we understand. If Yahushua himself, God himself in the flesh, walked around and met one of these Christians, the double-minded Christians or the double-minded uh, Muslims or double-minded Hebrews for that matter, anybody who feels like, you know what, I can keep sinning, looked them in the face and said, my son, my daughter, had a beautiful experience, walked right past us like we didn't even exist. Just God just walked past, did it ignore us. We out here trying our best to just keep what the book say. He would walk right past us, go right to one of these hypocrites and look at him and say, my son, my daughter. I mean, let's just say we witnessed it happen. We know it was the true God, right? Not joking around. I'm just saying like, let's really say this happened. We all agree. We all saw it. It was a miracle. That was the real God, the one that we worship. We bowing down to the man. Man just ignoring us. He walked, my, my daughter, right? My son, to one of these hypocrites. And we sitting there looking like, he talked to them. He know, what, know. He know what's best, right? He know what's best. We bowed out to him. And then after that, they keep sinning. Grab this from me. This is a... Uh, this is, uh, Luke chapter 13, give me verse, uh, what verse 16 say? And ought not this woman being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, to lose, love these 18 years, be loosed from the... No, nah, give me verse 23. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying uh -huh. towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? He said, are there few that be saved? He said... Is there only going to be a little bit of people that get into the kingdom? Let's hear about it. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Uh-huh. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Uh-huh. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door, uh -huh. and ye begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Uh huh. Watch this. shall answer and say unto you, I know you not from where you come from and where you are. He said, I don't know you. But watch this. Then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunken in thy presence. We've done was, what? Eaten and drunken in thy presence. We know you. What you mean you don't know? I mean, we was right there with you, eating and drinking with you. What do you mean you don't know us? Watch what he said. And thou hast taught in our streets. He said, you was teaching us. These are people that had physical experiences with the Son of Man. Keep going, watch this. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not from where you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Why do you think in the beginning when we say, I mean, even if you got a supernatural experience, a gift of tongue, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience, it can and will be used against you in the day of judgment. At the end of the day, it comes down to are you a worker of iniquity or not? That's it. Everything else, I mean, listen, you, yeah, I taught in your streets. I was teaching you. Yeah, you're right. And you did eat with me. I did have a meal with you. I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. I just don't know. I don't know where you came from. I don't know who you are. You think you have fellowship because you had an experience, you had a vision, you had a dream, you had something, something, something you had. This good thing, a real chill came down your spine one time when they played the organ at church. That's fine. That's great. Those are all beautiful things if you follow it up with obedience. Right? You follow it up with obedience, you good. You follow it up with sin, means nothing. The most high God to look at that and be like, sorry, I just can't recognize that. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know who you are care nothing about you walking, meeting Yahushua in the flesh. We can all see it happening. Don't nobody care nothing about that. When it's all said and done, you have to obey. Nothing comes before obedience. Nothing. What else we got? We've been gnashing teeth. We already read that? Yeah. Grab Philippians for me. It's Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Dad. Yes, son. I appreciate that. He's hard. Come in. Come in. 
It's uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. My brother, he said, Finally, my brother, and watch this. Rejoice in the Lord. He said, Rejoice. I love what he said next. Watch this. To write the same things to you. He to said, To write name. the same things to you. In other words, for me to keep telling y'all the same stuff over and over and over. Watch this. To me, indeed, is not grievous. He said, That thing don't bother me. But what is it? But for you, it is safe. All right? Sometimes, I mean, we might feel, and I don't know, ain't nobody said this to me, but sometimes we might feel like, man, why do we keep talking about sin? Listen, to me it's not grievous. But to y'all, that thing is shaped. To all of us, that thing is safe. If you just keep hearing the same thing, same thing, same thing, when it comes to the book, that's safe. Right? It's safe for us. It's safe for us to be reminded of these things. Right? It's important. If we're not reminded, we'll mess around and forget. Our salvation is based off of us keeping these things in memory. All right? Keep going. For we are all, wait, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Uh-huh. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in the Messiah, Yahushua, and have confidence in the flesh. Uh-huh. And have no confidence in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he has, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Mm -hmm. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, mm -hmm. as touching the law of Pharisee, mm -hmm. concerning zeal, persecuting the, the congregation, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Mm -hmm. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of the Messiah, Yahushua, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win the Messiah. He said, he counts them as what? Dung. Everything in his past, he counted it as loss. That's the mindset that we have to have. Everything in the past, we have to count it as lost. Worthless. He said, count it as dung. Otherwise, we'll get hung up. We'll get hung up in pride. We'll say, you know what? You're not about to sit here and tell me I didn't know God because God literally got out of heaven and talked to me and walked with me. And everybody saw it and it was a miracle and I was in the middle of it and he came to see me. You're not about to tell me just because I sinned, I don't know God or I never met God or I'm a liar because I fellowship with God. I fellowship with God. You're not about to see and tell me that. That's our pride talking at that point. In our mind, it's true. It's like, well, God was really right there, and I did fellowship with it. It was a miracle. Everybody did see it. In our mind, it's true. At the end, though, the man going to be like, i never seen you. You're a worker of iniquity. Right? So at the end of the day, we're not looking at what the word is telling us. We're looking at our own experience. And we're speaking from a position of pride. We got to humble ourselves. We got to be able to say, Everything that used to be good to me, that, that fellowship experience, all that, meant nothing. Because I sinned afterwards. Meant nothing. Right? I counted all as dumb. You know what I got to do now? Start over. That got to be our attitude. I didn't know nothing. That is how we get past what we just read in Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 said, once you enlighten, what the light mean? Once you know, there's no way he's going to be crucified again for your butt. So you know what we got to say? When we mess up, I ain't know what I was talking about. Right? I, th I mean, I thought I knew. I ain't know what I was talking about. I said I repented. I said I was born again. I got baptized. I said I wasn't going to sin no more. You know what? I was a liar. I ain't know what I was talking about. Grab grab uh, first, uh, what I want. Grab Grab 1 John chapter 3. You got to count all that's in your past as dumb. Nothing. 
worthless. <clears throat> Alright? Even if you look, we ain't got to get it, but even if you look at Romans, Romans chapter 3, it'll tell you that he became a propitiation, which is a sacrifice, to remit our, uh, to, for a remission of sins that are past. Alright? So all the stuff in our past, he's wiping away, he's cleaning up the, all the stuff in our past. So that includes some of the good stuff that we think is in our past. All that stuff, wiped away. We just got to start fresh. Because without doing that, we hold on to that. Then basically what we tell him is, well, I knew God. I knew you. And then I fell after knowing you. Mm, he can't work with that. Nothing he can do with that. Oh, you knew me. You've been enlightened. That means for me to make this thing work, I would have to be sacrificed again. And that's not happening. Better off just saying you didn't know trust me. You better off just be like, mm, I don't know what I was talking about, Lord. <laughs> Forgive me. I had no idea what I was talking about. I was running my darn mouth when I was talking about I was repentant. I was just running my darn mouth when I was talking about I was born again. I don't know what's wrong with me. How important is it to you? What's more important, getting into the kingdom or making sure people know that you've been saved this whole time? For a lot of Christians, it's important. I remember I had many conversations with my mom. I was like, I was like, Ma, I think I'm reading this Bible. This thing don't make sense. If you telling me you were saved, this is the day you got saved. But then these are some of the things that happened afterwards in our life. I'm like, I was there, I witnessed them. And I know that's a sin. So that don't make sense. Maybe saved ain't a day. Maybe saved is enduring to the end. Like maybe you saved when you make it to the end. Right? Oh, that thing, that thing. What? See, no, nah, see, no, nah, that's that legal list. Because you know what? I don't want to let go all of these experiences I had. All this clout I had at the church. All these different things. I have to give all that up. And I have to say all that time I had no idea what I was talking about. In order for me to be saved. At some point, you got to make a decision. Which one more important? I'll take saved for 700, Bill. You know what I mean? Give it to me. We good. I don't know what I was talking about. I say it all the time. I didn't know what I was talking about. I was in here teaching Bible study. Right? Teaching Bible stuff. I don't know what I'm talking about. Listen, I don't know. I can't tell you. I seen that that. Oh, no, we, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm running my mouth. Might have got some stuff right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm It just happens. I guess. I got lucky. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm talking about, though. Lord, I don't I didn't know you. Don't know what you're talking about. I was a liar. Can I get in, please? That's all I'm trying to talk about. I ain't. I could. The only person I, who I'm going to cut a deal with. T? T going to get me in? No, if I'm cutting a deal, I'm cutting a deal with the man. Listen, I didn't know what I was talking about. Can I get in, please? This is uh, 1 John chapter 3. Give me verse uh, 5. 1 John chapter 3, verse 5. Watch what the book got to say. It's all, right? Watch how it all lined up. The whole book going to line up. You can't get away from it. No matter which way you try to go, that thing going to catch you. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. The reason why he was manifest, manifest means what? Made obvious. The reason why he was made obvious, Yahushua was made obvious, made obvious to people, people could see him, people know about him, is to take away our sins. Okay, and what else? And in him is no sin. And in him you don't sin. Nobody sins in him. So let's hear about it. Whosoever abides in him sins. If you remain in him, you don't sin. Right? He was made to take away our sin. In him, there is no sin. So if I'm in him and I stay there, then I'm not sinning. Right? What comes next, though, T? Why are you taking so long to read down? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I was saying. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Uh-huh. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. If you sin, you haven't seen. I mean, let's just say, the man came down from heaven, talked to you. Everybody saw that thing was on CNN, live action. And everybody knew that was the true God that they were looking at. And talked to you. If you sin after that, I get on national uh, CNN. You mind taking me back? I ain't never seen the man. I don't know who that was that showed up to me. I don't even know what I was doing. Don't know what I was thinking about. Don't even remember being there. Uh, can I get in now? Why are we going to play around with the man? If the man tells you if you sin, you've never seen him, you're going to sit here. No, that, that can't be what that means. Because I know I did. Shut up. <laughs> you did the it, man, you, you never seen him. He's trying to help you out. All we 
gotta do, but you know what? We got too much pride to admit that. We got too much pride to be like, no, I ain't never seen God. I never knew him either. No, we all want to say we knew God our whole lives. And he been with us through our ups and downs. That's a lie. He ain't been with you darn through nothing. Your butt been on your own. You better say it. I've been on my own this whole time. I don't know what I'm talking about. I thought he was with me back then. I don't know who that was that was with me. Made a fool out of me, though. Yeah, he literally said, if you admit I was walking contrary to you. The man, that's, that's his request. He said, you know what? You turn from your sins and admit you walk contrary to me and I walk contrary to you, and I'll come back and get you. If I'm walking contrary to you, what that mean? Against you. I'm against you, but we enemies. Like people out here thinking that God been with me. I think God ain't been with you. That's the devil that been with you. You think that's God. You think everything been cool. You know devil can copy every single thing you've ever witnessed and experienced except righteousness. The only thing he ain't got no interest in copying is righteousness. So what do you think is the one thing that the entire world think is impossible? Righteousness. Oh, nobody going to, listen, the Christian to tell you, you can see God, that ain't impossible. You can hear from God, that ain't impossible. You can do everything in Christ, that ain't impossible. Guess what's impossible for him, though? Oh, no, you can't just completely stop sinning. That's, no, you don't need you. That's, that's the one that's impossible? The one that's literally all over the book telling you to do. That's the one thing you think is impossible. Yeah, that's like hard. Everything else in Christ is possible like except for the thing that he tells you from the front of the book to the end of the book. That's insane. It's like, it's like seeing God is easier than that. Like, that's crazy. Oh, no, you can see him. Yo, no, you can see God. That, that Christian ain't going, I saw God yesterday. You know what I'm saying? You let the Christian tell I be seeing God all the time. God might be right here. They be seeing God in chips. You ever seen them people? Look, Jesus in the chip. In Catholic, Jesus in the chip. They put a chip. Put it in the dark. A chip. I mean, I, I saw one. They had a pizza. They had a pizza chip. They put that thing in the dark. You know what I mean? Just hold it up. But you people are insane. Somebody tell you stop sending up. Oh, my God. Don't be silly. That's impossible. It's impossible. Okay. The man said if you you in him, you remain in him, right? If you in him and you remain in him, you cannot sin, right? If you do sin, you have never seen the man, nor have you known the man. Give me Hebrews chapter 10. This is Hebrews chapter 10. You've never seen the man, nor have you known the man. Hebrews chapter 10 look like verse 26 is what it is. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Watch what the book say. For if we sin willfully after that, we he have said, received. If we feel sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for sins. There's no way that you, your sin can be atoned for. If we willingly sin after the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice. After the what of the truth? Knowledge. That's why the man told you, if you sin, you never seen him, nor have you what him? No. You ain't had no knowledge. You wasn't enlightened. You get baptized today, God forbid. But if anything happened after that, your butt didn't know what you were talking about. You hear me? That's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know what. I guess I didn't hear the word right or something. I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about. I didn't know. I didn't see him. I'm for real this time, though. Repent. I'm for real this time. This time we're making it to the end. Let's say you fall again after that. I don't know. I was a liar. That's two times I didn't darn lie. I want a whole passage full of lies. But for real, this time, this is it. And you make sure you get caught on your dying day, standing up, righteous, on the path to righteousness. That's it. As long as you know that it's attainable, you're in a better position than somebody that thinks it's impossible. Oh, yeah. If it one's impossible, it's impossible for them. It's impossible for them. It, uh, real quick, real quick. Give me a, uh, give me a, uh, give me a, uh, what I want. 
give me uh give me John 9. After that, we're gonna wrap around to uh 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're gonna end it off there. But give me John chapter 9. It's the the, the book of John, it's the uh, gospel of John. Chapter 9. What's the last verse of chapter 9? 41. Abriel, best friend. How are you? This is uh this is what? 41? What is it? Chapter 9, 41. 41 is the last one? Which one I want? It's like 40, uh, gotta be like 30 something? You want 41. Uh, I just want the last verse. Okay, uh, this is uh this is uh John chapter 9, verse 41. You want like the whole thing or like just this verse? Uh I don't want the whole thing. Okay, I don't necessarily I don't know if I just necessarily want one verse, but I don't want the whole thing for sure. Okay. So 41? All right, so this is John chapter 9, verse 41. And Yahshua said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remain. Everybody say, We understand. We see it. We know. All you got to say is, I didn't know what I was looking at. He said, If you said, if you just admitted to me, these are people that can literally see. Right? He talking to them, said, If you just told me you were blind, you'd be all right. And they mind, they can see. It's like I'm looking at you right now. Of course I'm not blind. Right? But he just let them know. All you have to say is if you if you just admit you are blind, you'll be high. But since you say you see, your sin remains. Since you say you know. So in the same way, since people just can't, I mean, I knew God this whole time. Okay. Since you say you know, your sin ain't going nowhere then. He can't he can't forget I said. Right? You haven't humbled yourself to him. It's first Corinthians chapter nine. We getting drunk right here. I want to wrap it back around to the apostles. All right? You got all the apostles. All of the apostles got baptized, right? Every one of them got baptized. And after they got baptized, every one of them sat there and walked with Yahushua with the closest, the tight-knit group. They shared, you know what I'm saying, stories with Yahushua. They ate with Yahushua. All right? Yahushua prayed with them. Right? All these things are important things. All these things are experiences that a lot of other people in the world didn't get. All right? Then Paul comes along. Ananias goes and... Was it Ananias? I think Ananias, if I'm not, not mistaken, went and, and baptized Paul. So Paul was baptized. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Then after Paul got baptized, Paul went on his way. Paul sinned a few times. Right? Paul admitted that he sinned a few times after he got baptized. Right? Does that mean that it's okay to keep sinning? I mean, because Paul was an apostle. He was chosen by God. He was baptized. So clearly, if he continues to sin, we can all continue to sin. Well, let's see if that's what the book says. This is Paul out of his own mouth. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23. Watch what the book says. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker of, partaker thereof with you. Uh huh. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receive the prize. Uh huh. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Uh huh. It, I therefore so run, not as un, not as uncertainly. So fight I not as one that beats the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that it by any means Listen, watch I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. So even Paul, the apostle, recognized, and he knew, even though he was chosen by God and God showed up to him in a vision, then blind him, and then had somebody come and baptize him. And after that, he came to him in another vision and told him what he ought to do. He ought to go preach to the Gentiles. This is a man that was chosen by God. He made, God made him an apostle. That man knew by himself. He said, after I get done preaching, if I don't have my stuff under control, my butter be cast away too. Our experiences don't matter. What we go through don't matter. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is did we obey God? Did we turn from our sins? 
Everything else is either extra credit or it's going to get you fell in the class. The only thing that matters at the end of the day is did we stand up before the most high God justified? And you got to repent from all sins to do that. Any questions? Let's pray out.